then I quickly just want to while we before we start, just want to quickly share the attendance register in the chat. Then also, if you still want to join the WhatsApp group um, and haven't been able to do so, you can send me a WhatsApp on the number that is on, on the screen, but I will also quickly just copy the link in the chat as well. Then you have two ways to get to, to the WhatsApp groups. OK, good morning, everyone. Um, basically, today we're going to going to look at um, the next the next chapter. So let's get into it. We're going to look at the simultaneous functions. Um, so we will look at break even equilibrium, some of the linear programming work and then also the consumer and producer surplus. Very important when we go into this is to know what the difference is between break even and equilibrium, because that is definitely something that they will test in your assignments and, and even in your exam. So they might ask you one question around equilibrium and then the next one might be about break even can I have the same nearly variables in it or questions in it or expressions in it. Um, so yeah, very, very important to understand the two of that. So we will we will look at that um, and then we're going to take a slight break over the two long weekends. That's that's it. And then only we will then return on the 6th of April with our our next session. But then you can see it is packed the 6th, the 13th, the, the 20th, I think 27. April is again a public holiday. Um, but then we go up again into your exams time. Um, so only the 6th of April will be our next session, but I will also communicate that on the group and in this, this chat as well. OK, so. Two things that, that we nearly need to. Or not two things, a few things, so um, we need to determine the point where two equations will intersect, so basically. Wherever two points intersect, we will need to need to work that out. Um, we will need to look at what is equilibrium and when does equilibrium happen? Explain the concept of break even. So again, we're not really you can see all of this was. Nearly a few years ago, so they can't ask you again in the the our format of the exams and the assignments are now to explain something um, but they can just ask you some practical practical questions around that but we're going to look at equilibrium break even consumer surplus and producer surplus for for linear, so we will in later chapters get to the to the non-linear ones. And then when we get to the linear programming, um, there also we will need to to nearly find feasible areas or even solve a small equation of what might be the, the feasible areas. We will also need to put together um, some expressions. So depending on the information that they give us, um, we can all put expressions together or use those expressions to to look at um, feasible areas. 
Okay, so let's get straight into into the, the important things. So when we look at equilibrium, so we only have equilibrium when the supply and the demand function is similar. Okay, so when we talk supply and demand and where that intersects, we will have a market equilibrium. Okay, so important nearly equilibrium only looks at when demand and and supply are similar. Okay, so we will and you'll later on see I've I've given a few examples and questions that we will work through. So you will definitely see see how we will answer that. Then there is sometimes I haven't seen it a lot in your in your assignments or in your exam, but it is in the study go guide. So they talk about equilibrium in the labor market. So I just thought, okay, let's let's put in something if you need to ever look at that. But what basically happened, the same picture as in this one, price, quantity, supply and demand. So again, supply and demand, quantity, but the in the place of the price is the price of a wage. Okay, so that that is nearly so this is still still your price, but instead of price of the goods, it is price of of labor. And sometimes they might have that labor is a straight line, but but again they need to tell you. So they need to tell you how does the um, demand and supply curve look like. And you will just as with the other ones, work it out exactly it's the same. So you will get a supply curve, which you will make equal to the demand curve, and then you will all work out the Q or the price. Um, but yeah, we will, I will show you one of, of market equilibrium. Okay, just quickly on the recordings as as we go along. Um, so the recordings are supposed to be on your Western Cape portal. Um, so if you don't have access to the Western Cape portal, you can send an email to them on ctntat at unisa.ac.za. So it is supposed to be. But also, if you join the WhatsApp group, um, I post the recordings on the WhatsApp group as well. Um, so if you have not joined the WhatsApp group, please do so. Um, I will, and normally what I will do today is also post the previous WhatsApp, uh, the previous, this, discussion and the previous presentation as well. So it will be on on the WhatsApp group. Cool. OK, so equilibrium we we've done with the so we will get to. To how it also works in 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 the market, then. We look at two things around still supply and demand um, and that is price and um, price floors price ceilings so where sometimes they they will tell you that you need to sell something at a at a certain price um, or they tell you you can't sell something um, less than something. So 
normally normally the price floor will be that um so a lot of of nearly um necessary goods um might be that you are not allowed to sell it for more than something um so so if we look at um at certain things that that has come into play that is where so if you look at so it's the least price that the seller would get for the product ceiling is the maximum price um beyond which a seller can't sell so so if you look at the price ceiling that might be ugh, let me now think about something that um so let's think about bread there was a huge case around bread that the industry nearly has coll um, colluded to to sell bread at certain prices but um there's certain bread that you can't sell um above a certain price so if you look at 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 the bread that is not cut into pieces that's baked at the, the checkers of a shop right or whatever that must go for a certain price um it's different if the bread has been further worked on um but but there's like a a minimum or maximum that that it can go for the the price floor and here is also a a, a good one um is is your minimum wages so minimum wages that was introduced so um you're not allowed to to nearly pay somebody below a certain certain amount um so that will will then determine if you will have a full labor force market or if there wasn't and not talking any <laughs> any politics this is just the economics around it um so if there wasn't a minimum wage and it could be that you can lower the wage more people could have been employed but then again obviously the people will be earning less so it's always a very tricky one in the economics to weigh up nearly what is the best uh, minimum wage versus the, the demand the same on what is the price ceiling that you will put in so it's it's not just something that 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 government and other um, players in the market will will think up it is quite a, a process to to go through this then another one that that is is in your your study guide that again in the exam this is not asked that frequently it might be in your assignments but in the exam i haven't really seen that they ask a lot of price flooring price ceiling and then substitute goods versus complementary goods but it might be that in the assignment they they ask um, questions around it so so substitute good um nearly is something that let's say you buy um some type of washing powder and you decided that you're going to substitute it with something else because it's not um in in the store but you pray pay a bigger bigger price for it um and the demand might be bigger remember 
when was it? Nearly a year, year and a half ago. Is is anybody else having problems in in hearing me? Okay, so it might be Vincent, and and it it might be also yeah maybe if you lock off and lock on again that might help um also it might be because yeah so yeah so that might be the biggest reason um i also know that teams and microsoft still have issues after after the blackout so it might also be in areas where it has not has not recovered um, so, a, a easy one to think about sub substitute goods is what nearly a year ago when Prime hit, hit our markets. Um, everybody was then substituting their energy aid or power aid and wanted to buy Prime. Um, and Prime was just the, the in thing. Um, more products were sold at the, sorry, more products were sold. The demand was so much higher at a much higher price, but it was sold and people, people wanted it. Suddenly, not that anymore, but at that stage, that was a clear substitute um, for some of the other products. So, complementary goods. Is is nearly where, and and this is always the uh, how I remember it. It it is weird, but it's like um, I will never eat eat bacon and eggs apart. It will be nearly that will be what we you will eat together, butter and and bread. So it nearly. Because one product is selling, the other product is also selling. So the complementary um, product is nearly selling. And you can see how the, how the retailers have, have caught up with this, this principle very, very nicely. Um, so if you look at how sometimes they group products together um, to sell that. So they will nearly put together two com complementary goods. So they might, um, if you look at at what what Pick and Pay, Liquor Tops and all those guys are doing is a lot of time they would sell you the brandy with a bottle of Coke or sell you the gin with a six pack of tonic. Um, when you go into the retailer itself, it might be that they may sometimes do it a bit differently because they want you to buy some of the products that might not be flying off the shelves with some of the products that goes well off the shelves. So, so it is quite interesting to see how the, the retailers really have caught up with this complementary goods um, idea. Okay, so, but again, very little of this is normally in your exams or or in your, your study guide. Then another one that specifically on, on your supply and demand again, is when taxes are involved and when subsidies are involved. So what basically happened with a tax, a tax will increase the price and then it will nearly decrease the, the quantity. So when you bring in certain taxes, it it will increase the the pricing and it will decrease the the quantity until it 
reaches some kind of equilibrium later on again. On the, on the subsidy side, just the opposite happened nearly. So you will have an equilibrium at a certain point. You bring in a subsidy, so um, again, very good example is a lot of uh, the basic goods in South Africa is not, not taxed, so there's certain subsidies on it. So that means the price is, is lowered, but also it means that the quantity will increase. So again, maize is subsidized. So the price of maize, instead of maybe 15 rand, is 12 rand. So you will have a price decrease. And because you have a price decrease, more people are able to buy it, so your your quantity will increase. Okay, so that is nearly the the thought process with with a subsidy. The opposite happens with a tax. So with a tax, obviously the price increases. The higher the price, the less people will will buy it. Okay, so all of these is is still to do with with equilibrium so all of these are to do with with supply and demand okay so all still supply and demand and then we get to to break even and and break even is just the place where the profit is zero so your total revenue is equal to your total cost. So remember last week, we we looked at, at this specific slide where we said, okay, total revenue minus total cost is profit. Um, so where that profit is actually equal to zero, so where you make no profit, that is for break even. Yeah, so equilibrium is between supply and demand, break even is around the profit. So after the month, do you break even? Yes or no, did I make a profit? Did I make a loss or am I zero on, on my books? Okay, so break even is the point um, where total revenue and total cost um, is ex exactly the same. So, and again, let me just, I'm going to put that at the end of that because total, total surplus, um, so your consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total surplus, again, is to do with, with your supply and demand. Um, so, again, there is equilibrium at that point, and at that point, the, to the top will be your consumer surplus, the bottom part will be your producer surplus. They love to ask us. So this is one of the things that they will ask you in the exam. Um, this is the one for linear you will get one question around non-linear as well. So definitely in your exam, they love to ask um, one of a producer or the consumer surplus. What we also normally do is if they ask consumer surplus for linear, then we will normally ask producer surplus for, for non-linear. Um, but yeah, they love to ask the consumer and producer surplus um, questions. Okay, I just quickly want to post the registration or attendance register. Again, in if you guys haven't, it is 
now in the chat. Okay, so, and then from consumer and producer surplus, you can now see this component. So that is actually just been total surplus. So whenever they talk about total surplus, it is basically just the consumer surplus component plus the producer surplus. Again, I haven't really seen that they talk a lot of, of total surplus in assignments and in, in your exams. So to be honest, more of the, the single where you need to work out consumer surplus or producer surplus. Okay, so that is that is on on a consumer surplus and producer surplus. We will get to a question where we will work this out um, because we will need to work out the area and and the area then is we need to go back to maths at some stage where where you did that because the area of a of a triangle is of times base times height so it will be that will be the base that will be the height um, so that will be how we will will work it out the same if you look at the producer surplus that will be the base again and that will be the height so just when we when we get to those questions how we need to work out consumer surplus and how we need to work out producer surplus is via the the triangle formula of area and that that we will look at somewhere we've got a question around that okay then the last part of of this the section is around linear programming um so here they can ask a few things so they can ask you to in a word some nearly ask you to get to these formulas so there is definitely one included here that we will look at that then they can ask you by giving you this diagram to say what is a feasible area so we will work that out as well and what they also can do is they can give you the objective function and to say which point of this feasible area um, aligns to that or will make that objective function a maximum value or minimum value um, so again we will we will get into that um, and we will also look at certain constraints um, around this linear programming with a feasibility region and things like that so we will nearly look at all of these angles through different different questions so some of it was taken from previous exam papers some of it was taken from um, previous assignments um, when it was still still paper based so so we will work through through a few of them um, in this session. Okay, so let's let's go into into the first one. So we haven't really looked at this before. So this is nearly between study unit two and three, where where we look at solving. Um, systems of linear equations um, where it's not demand or supply or revenue it is basically 
you need to solve for X, Y, and Z by looking at, at Bree's free formulas. Okay, so some of you have the, the nice calculators, but sometimes you can just put that into, into a matrix and and into your into your calculator. Um, some of you don't, so I'm just gonna nearly show you how I would have calculated it without the calculator because my HB definitely can't do that. Um, but I know there's some of the sharp calculators that you can put this into the, the shop and it will solve your equation. You guys can also check out um, and again, sometimes um, there is nice links on on Google. Um, so you can always practice and check if you are right. So Wolfram Alpha is really a nice a nice online site where you can see you basically put in your equations and like what the calculator will do, um, your, you can test it online as well. So I am putting that link also for you in the chat that you can see um, and can, can click on it. We will also, I'll, if when you guys are listening to the recording, there you can just see the the um, link as well, but you can basically just search for solve systems of linear equations, and there will be a nice um, one coming up. Okay, so again, that is nearly to to test your answers. I'm not hundred percent sure with which. Um, system you guys are working yeah it's free it's free so you can you can see so let me quickly show you we're gonna I can quickly put that in so let's put those equations in and you can see it so I'm just not 100% sure how you guys are being evaluated in the end of the year with all the the tools and things like that. Um, so if you are allowed to use online tools, um, but this is a very nice one for you to to practice to see. And Go it out. Okay, so there they say. Okay, why did it now not? Supposed to let's just maybe put V in zero. Okay, so you are so on the fourth equation, just put in zero. Um, and when you guys, we, when we get to it, um, you will see that these are all the answers of x is equal to three, y is four, z is minus two. Okay, so but I will show you now. See, that is that's that's the one question that I don't know for your exams. If you are uh, allowed to, so so what 
things are you allowed? Because I know in previous years um, you were allowed to use some of our online calculators because I know Sharp does have an online calculator. Um, so I think that is something that that if any of you have uh, the TAT pages, the 101, 102, um, can share that. And maybe it's also something to ask the lecturer at some point if if we are allowed now to use that. Because again, there is certain calculators that can do this, um, but I, everybody doesn't have the money to buy those calculators. Um, so let's find out what you're allowed to use in the exam. For now, it's a nice one also for you to to use to to check what you're doing. Um, so even if it is for you to to see how the process work, um, you will be able to to look at the calculation. Um, so that also is one of the nice things from some of these online tools is that you can um, test it, then you can see how the calculations went. So, but let, let's look at how I would have done it. Um, so let's look at, at some of the calculations um, and then we'll see if we get to get to the same answers. Okay, so in the first equation, we have X, Y, Z. Second one, we only have X and Z. And in the third one, we have Y and Z. So nearly we will need to need to change something um, that that we can that we can work with it. So I would normally go with the first one, and I would say, okay, let's have x minus two y plus three z, and let's just make that, and we can see it's a z um, equal to minus eleven. And then I will say, okay, what must I do to a second one to get something that I can cancel out with the first one? So X, I'm not going to divide by two because that makes it difficult. But if I look at the Z, if I multiply that second equation by three, I will get a minus three Z. So let's do that. Six X, there's no Y minus three Z is equal to 24. So when we then look at it, that and that can cancel out. So now suddenly, if we add those two together, we sit with one formula that is 7x minus 2y equal to 13. Okay, so we haven't, haven't solved anything yet. But now what I will also do is use 1 and 3. And then we can again get rid of the, the 7, oh, sorry, the z so that we will be able then to work with with those two. Yes, there is a question. Sorry, say, can you please repeat for me? OK, no problem. OK, so. So what what we've done is. I will need to get to equations that I can nearly put into uh, a equilibrium or something like that. So where I can say, if I have 
x it is equal to to a certain number in all of these questions or systems of linear equations there's three or two variables so i still need to eliminate some of those so that i can get to a simpler formula okay so so to do that and and one can play around with it there's there's certain ones that you can rather use than what i'm doing so you could have maybe said um if you add the second plus the third they will also fall things things will fall away so there is with this solving of of these systems of the linear equations there's normally more than one one way that you can do it um i just as, as i'm used to i just start at the top so i've got my my original formula which is that formula uh, original formula one that is x minus 2y plus 3z equal to minus 11 and then i said well i see this is z in the second one so if i change that second one a bit i might be able to get rid of the z's when i add them together so to do that I will multiply that second equation by 3. So I would get 2x times 3 will be 6x. The minus z will become minus 3z and the 8 will become 24. Then I am allowed to say, OK, but if I add these two equations, what do I get? So I get x plus 6x give me 7x minus 2y there is nothing um so that stays minus 2y 3z minus 3z is zero so that will fall away and then minus 11 is equal to to 24. okay so that will give me a new formula that i can work with the same principle i will apply to to the second formula to a third formula sorry um, so again i will have 2x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to minus 11 but i need to do something with the with the second formula um, to to get rid of some of those things um, so what I would do is to say, OK, let's again, I want to get rid of the Z. So I would say, OK, we will need to multiply again with with three. So it becomes. There's not an X in that one, so three Y times three is equal to. nine Y, I just quickly want to explain and then I'll I'll take the question your free time z is free z and three times 10 is 30. so in this instance I will subtract the bottom one so then I will get x minus y or 11y those two will fall away again but here i will get minus 41. okay there, there is a question so let's handle that quickly and then then we can move on again morning sir yes i would like to find out the three that you have multiplied with where do you get the three from Okay, so that is something that that I look at nearly. So I see 
the only way that I can cancel that Z out is by, by multiplying it with that with a free. So that is how, how I pick up, up the free is to say in my first equation I've got free Z. In this equation, I only got Z. So what must I multiply Z with to get to the free? If I had Z here as 5Z and that was still minus Z, I would have multiplied everything out with 5. Okay, so I basically am looking for a way to get rid of that free Z in my next calculation. Okay, the, the reason I could have done, and let's quickly, I could have done the same with the X, but then it becomes difficult because then to get rid of that two, I need to divide by two to get to one X. I could have multiplied by 2x also straight through and then you subtract the two x's so that you can also do. Um, so nearly it is find a way that that it makes it the easiest for you to you to work work with because if we've done that we would have sat with a with a Y and a Z that you could have already used in the second. So there is really a few ways to, to do this. Um, and I probably now took the long way. So then you see that in this equation, I've got seven X, I've got two Y, I've got X, I've got 11 Y. So now I would, basically use these two equations. So it is, if you look at how easy it was to get to it via the online tool and how long it takes, if you need to really work it out, it does take, take some time. So now I am looking at, okay, I want to get get rid of the, the X. So I first will multiply everything by seven. So now it becomes really big numbers that we're gonna work with. And I hope it is correct. Is very easier way to do this. But okay, let's, let's first multiply that that by seven, so we will get a very big number. Um, so if we now subtract the two, seven minus that will be zero X, so that will fall away. That minus minus that will give us plus 75 Y. That minus minus that will give us equal to to 300 and then 300 divided by 75 will give us y equal to 4. Okay, we still need to work out the rest but already we see y equal to 4 was was the right answer then you can put that y equal to 4 back in that equation so that we can get 7x minus 8 is equal to 13 so 7x is equal to 21 so x is equal to 3 again if we look at X is equal to three. And then the last one is into one of the formulas where Z is. So I would have 
nearly looked at. And I would use this formula, so. So let me just quickly, that is the first one. That is the second one that we got. And then for. Z. I will use 2X. Minus Z equal to 8. So we know that X is 3. equal to 8. So that will go over. So minus Z is equal to 2, which will then will become plus Z is equal to minus 2. OK, a long process that one needs to do where the 3, 4 and minus 2 very simple when when we look at one of our online links. Um, so, so I think it, we need to find out if you guys are allowed to to use the online tools, um, because it really does help a lot, um, and because I know that one of I think one of the the sharp calculators or cashiers can actually solve this equation by just putting in in the numbers. Yes, there's two hands. Uh, sorry, sir. Just yes. want to ask, uh, on, your, on your third equation, I see you said 7x minus uh, 2y equals to 13. What did you do here? Did you add with the x on the first equation or you multiplied? OK, so. So let me quickly see. So that was. Yes, so I added those two together. So I added the, the first equation and the, the second equation that I multiplied by, by three. I added those. So I added the X plus the six X to give you seven X minus two Y. There wasn't any any Y's in the second. So that stays for minus two Y. And then the plus 3z minus 3z that will will fall away so that there is no no z's. And then it was minus 11 plus 24 that would have given us the 13. OK, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah it does. It does because I wasn't sure what you did there. Yeah, no, cool. So yeah, please ask. So I added. I added those two together. All right, cool. All right, thank some, you. Cool. There's another question. Yes, sir. I just want to know if I'm am I wrong if I I put okay. Am I wrong if I took the simplest equation and make it maybe the subject of the formula? Not like, at all. So you that you will. Did you get the same answers? No. You can. So what what you can do. Is let's quickly. So let's. Let's look at at two and three. So what you could have done if you make it. So you could have done with with two and three. So let's just. The minus Z you could have made. Done that. So just an example of making something. The same and that would have been. Three Y. Or minus three Y plus 10. So you could have made Z here in two and three the, the object of the equation. And then you could have said, if I add those two together, you will get zero. 
if I look at Vasa, when here I sit with a with a new equation that you could have also used, like mm. like I did with one of these, you could do the same. Um, you can also say in this some of these instances you could have so let me quickly show another one where i had this one the seven x minus two y plus 13 and let's just rewrite this this equation as 11 y minus 41 so you could have done and put x into that x because that x and that x is the same so you could have made that the subject okay let me just this should be equal so minus 2y is equal to 13 and then you could have solved y as well so this you could have done that um so and you could have done it to say well i want the y to be the, the object so you can play around with these um formula formulas a lot so there is there is definitely just not one one way of doing it. You can make it by substituting some of it if you make x the object of a, of a formula. You can put then everything that is x. You can um, replace by that by that formula. So there is really a few ways that you can do this. Okay. Does that help a bit? Okay. So, so this question you can really, really play around with with a formula set. Um, there are shorter ways also to do it, um, and then obviously you can always check with the online tool that if what you're doing is is correct okay sure okay so this one this one is a lot of of writing um but this is one that they how they will ask it is not how i put it up they will again need to ask it for you with options um, but i thought let's just let's just look at everything read through it um i will highlight some and then we will write down what the formulas are okay so let's look at at what they give us so a furniture manufacturing company manufacturing dining room tables and chairs okay so i just want to highlight it as two different ones um so that we can get so tables requires 540 minutes for assembly and 180 minutes for finishing a chair requires 150 minutes for assembly and 60 minutes for finishing. Then they tell us the number of hours available per week for assembly is at least 150. And so that is another one coming in. And for and for finishing, it is at most hundred. 
Okay, so at least 150, at most 100. If your x is the number of tables, y is the number of chairs produced per week, write down the system of inequalities that best describe the situation. So what they will normally then give you is, they will tell you, they will give you four or five sets of equations that you will need to, need to, need to say which one is correct or incorrect. Okay, so let's, let's look at all these, these possible solutions. So, we will need to look at how much is possible with the assembly time and how much is possible with um, the finishing time. So what I will normally do is draw a table. And I would say I've got x, which is tables. I've got y that is, oh no, why didn't I make that yellow? Sorry, let me just, I thought I did, but it is easier for me to pick up as well. And then I have available time. So, for assembly, they tell us at least 150. Now again, I will add one of the things from stats where they tell us what those words, so at least, at most, um, because at least means that you can't produce less than 150. So the minimum that you can produce is 150. So 150 or more hours. And then for finishing, they tell us at most. So you can't exceed 100 hours in the finishing. Okay, so that is the first two critical ones that we got out of here is assembly at least 150, finishing at most 100. Now what we will look at is what they say about um, the tables. And so they tell us that, and remember, where did they say that? Um, hours per week. Now suddenly they tell us dining room tables and chairs tables require 540 minutes. So how many hours is 540 minutes? It is nine hours. Okay, right, so the first thing again we need to make sure that the units that we are working with is the same. Um, so we work with hours in, in the time allocation. So we will need to change it to hours in, in the, the formulas as well. So assembly takes nine hours for X and it's set that it requires 150 minutes for chairs. So again, 150 divided by 60 will give us the hours. So it will be two and a five, 2.5 Y or for the assembly time. Then we will look at finishing. Finishing for X, is 180 minutes, 
180 minutes is 3x. And for the finishing for y, wait, 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 is, is 60. Um, so 60 divided by 60 is 1y. Okay, so here of in our equations would be 9x plus 2.5y will be big or equal to 150. Another one will be then with 3x plus y is small or equal to 100. And then what they will normally add to this um, is to say x is big or equal to zero, y is big or equal to zero. Okay, and the reason why that is, is we can't produce negative products. So I can't produce a negative number of tables. Even if the formula says it's maybe possible, I can't. So you can't produce negative negative products. So the x must always be big or equal to zero, the same with the y. It must always be bigger or equal to zero. You can't produce a negative number. You can produce zero. So if it means that you produce for, for you to make the most profit just tables, that's fine. When you produce just tables, but then it will be zero chairs. Um, in your assignments and in your exam, what they most likely will have is they could have the same formula, but instead of a nine, they could have said 540, so that you nearly use the 540 instead of making it the same as the to convert the minutes to the hours. So that is definitely one of our answer sets would have been if you didn't convert the minutes to the hours, there will be an answer set for you in in the exam, unfortunately. So so they love to love to do that specifically in in most of the decision sciences um, subjects. Just again, I posted the the attendance register for you guys if you haven't done it, please, please do that. Okay, so, so this is one where they give you a lot of information in words and you will need to solve um, what the equation looks like. I love to draw the, the diagram because then it, it makes it simpler. That that you can see how the how the formulas would would look like. Okay, let's go now suddenly into into supply and um, let's see what what they ask us. So they tell us supply function of a certain product is p equal to fifty plus 2q, where p is the price, q is the number of units produced. Find the producer's surplus at market equilibrium if the market price is equal to 90. Okay, so if the market price is 90, what will be the number of Q? So let's let's work that out. OK, 
Okay, that will go over to that side. So it's 90 minus, minus 50, which gives us 40, equal to 2Q, divide by 2. So we now sit at that Q is 20, where P is equal to 90. So let's look at, at that formula, or let's just first look at how we would draw it. So here is the, the surplus that, that we will need to look at. They ask us to work out the producer surplus. Okay, so They ask us to work out the pro wait the producer surplus where price is ninety and we worked out that Q is twenty. Okay, so how to work it out? Producer surplus is um, we will need to work out that area. So remember how we will work that as is half base times height. Okay, so we know that is up until 20, so let's call that the height. How big is or how long is that? Do we know what that point is? And that we did last week to check what that, so that is your C cutoff. So that point would have been 50. And they give us the formula. So that point is 50. So when Q is equal to zero. When Q is equal to zero, your price is 50. So we know that is 50. We know that is 90 because that is what they've given us. So the difference between the 90 and the 50 will give us that base that we will need to work with. Okay, so that will be a half times 90 minus 50 is 40 minus 20, which will give us 800 divided by 2, which is 400. Okay, so they needed inverse to give you that supply function because you needed to get that point and that point you can get from the the formula they needed to tell you something to work out that equilibrium they can't just tell you that at the equilibrium work out the, the producer's surplus. They need to tell you what that equilibrium is. They could have given you a demand function to work out that equilibrium. Um, so that they can do, or they can tell you what all the my market price is at that equilibrium, or they could have told you what Q is at that equilibrium. So they, yeah, they said what the price is, but they could have told you the market quantity is 20. Then we would have put in 20 in that original. And you would have also then gotten that P is 90. So then you could have worked with, with P again. So 
they need to give you enough information that you can work out what is that equilibrium point so that you can work out the two distances. Okay, they can't, so, so they need to give you that information, else you can't do it. Um, the same we will get now to a, a consumer surplus one as well, where, where we will look at, and they need to give you enough information that, that you can work that out. They normally give you too much information. Um, so they normally give you maybe one or two extra things that, that you might use for wrong information, but they need to give you all the information needed for you to work, work that out. I'll show in one of the others, one of the, the consumer surplus that, again, that we will need to see all the information that needs to be in there. So when we look at consumer surplus, then we probably will get that point. So we might get the demand curve. But let's see when we get to the, the consumer surplus, um, what what we need to do. And you can also now see with this, you can't work out the top part because they haven't given you enough information to work out the, the consumer surplus. Um, so they have given you enough to to work out the producer surplus, but there's not information even to work out consumer surplus, where sometimes, again, they might give you both to see if you know which one, which one to work with. But in this instance, there isn't enough information to, to work out what, what the um, consumer surplus is. You can't guess now that that is going to be the same length. You don't know. Um, I've drawn this nearly as it should be 90 degrees onto one another, but it doesn't need to be. So you can't make assumptions that that will now suddenly be, be the same length. That you can't do. They need to give you the information. Okay, so let's look now at the at the consumer surplus one. Um, and let's see. So so rightly now they give you the demand curve. So they give you the demand curve that will look something like this. Now we already know, okay, at that point, we've got 60. And then they tell us, well, yeah, at this point, the supply curve goes through. At that supply curve, it is 16. The price is 16. Okay, so now we can again work out what what Q will be. So we will need to substitute the 16 in the P to work out what Q will be. See, so again, they don't give you much information. They only give you in this one the necessary information. So again, we will not be able to work out what the um, producer surplus is because we don't know the formula for S. We only know the demand one. So that is the area that we will need to need to work out. So let's quickly on this side, minus four Q. If I take the minus six, over 60 to the other side, it is 16 minus 60, which will give us minus 44. So I can divide on both sides by minus 4, so that my Q 
will be equal to 11. Okay, so again, if you calculated something and suddenly you get that Q is a negative number, then somewhere a mistake was made again because we can't get a negative Q. Okay, so you can't get um, somebody produce a negative um, number of, of products. Okay, but now again, so we sit with Q, we have that part, so a half, we've got to 11, and now we also got this area, which is 60 minus 16. So if we work that out, it's for 44 times 11 divided by 2, which will give us 242. Okay, so once again, just enough information for you to, to work out for consumer surplus. Again, we can't assume that is also, well, you can see it can't be 44 because then we're going into, into negative. So again, the, the supply function was not given, so we can't work out the producer surplus. If they have given you supply function, again, we would have said the supply function is equal to the, the demand function to get that equilibrium that we need to need to work with. OK, so that was consumer surplus and producer surplus um, that that somewhere in your assignments and in your exam that will be there. Um, so they love to to ask that. So it will definitely be in in that part. Okay. Let's look at at the next one. Okay, so here we need to work out what is the equilibrium price and quantity. Okay, so they they give us a demand and a supply curve. I want us to work out what is that, what is that number B? Okay, so here we basically solving for two equations. So we've got the one price for demand that is 100 minus 0 0.5 Q, and we've got the other price that is 10 plus 0 0.5 U. So we are basically solving simultaneous equations with just two variables. Okay, so we can now work out what Q will be. So 10 will go over to that side. So it will be 100 minus 10. The minus Q will go over to that side. So it's 0.5 Q plus 0.5 Q. So 1 Q will be equal to 90. Okay, so then we've got Q. We will need to solve the P. So you can put this 90 into that formula, or you can put it into that formula doesn't matter, you will get the same answer. So price of demand, 100 minus 0 0.5 times 90. So that will be 100 minus 45 will give us 
price of 55. If we used this formula, price of supply would have been 10 plus 0 0.5 times 90. So it would have been 10 plus 45, which would have also given us 55. So again, you could use any of the two formulas to replace um, or substitute the, the Q to get to the P. Um, because it is in equilibrium, it doesn't matter which formula you use, it will give you the same answer. So here it would have been Q is 90. If they needed to show it on a graph and price would have been 55. OK, so um, that is that is how um, we would have. And if we wanted to draw it further, that would have been 10. That would have been 100. Now suddenly you guys can see, oi, but they could have asked me to work out that area because I've got the 100, I've got the 55, I've got the 90. So they could have asked us to work out that area with this formula. They could have also asked us to work out this area with those information. There was a hand. Is there still a question? Or is it fine? No, there's no hands. It's actually quite, it seems easier as you're working it out right now, but when we were dealing with it, it was quite challenging. So now it's understandable. And thank you. Oh, great. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. So, and I think with a lot of these questions, and I will see where I have old exam papers because a lot of this will probably creep into your assignments as well. Very similar type of questions because you can just ask that amount of questions on these topics. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to show you also how these one for, for the producer surplus and consumer surplus was asked with specific information, but they could have in this instance also ask you um, and what might happen in the assignment is that this is the first question and a follow up question to that is to work out one of the surpluses. So that might also happen that you now have enough information to actually work, work that out. OK, so. The last one that on last two is. Or is there three? Uh, no, there is only two left, so it is on your linear programming um, because again, this is also things that you do will get in the exams in your assignments. You get it regularly. Um, I've showed two ones where the one is we need to check which feasibility area is the right one. And the other one is where they give you a feasibility area and you will nearly need to say is that point, is that point, is that point, or is that point the best one for this feasibility area? So, so let's first work out um, this set. So what I normally would do is, so I would start with the easy ones. So let's get red. So I would say, OK, the first one is I make to make need to make sure that Y is bigger than than zero. So all my answers needs to be above 
that x axis, so that is true. X must be bigger than than zero, so all of my y also needs to be um, to this side. Okay, so that those two are true. It might be that sometimes they add components in some of the other quadrants, but not in this one. So happily, I can say still that all four of these um, equal or pictures might still be be correct. Okay, then what I will do is I will go to the one that I think is the easiest. I don't want to work with the with a comma yet. So y smaller than equal to 3 minus x. Okay, so let's let's see where this is on the, the on the page. So we see that the y cutoff is 3. Okay, so we can see it is that formula, that line. And from that line, we can see that it needs to be small or equal to. So it needs to be on this side of that line, my feasibility area. So if it is to the smaller side, I already eliminate that one. Look at this one to the smaller side. So this might be one of the options. To the smaller side, it's not. It lies on the other one. Not to the smaller side might be one of the options. So by just looking at this initial one, I eliminated two of the options. OK. I didn't even work out, and here they tell us actually that's line one and line two. Um, so they they don't even need to say that to us, but at least here they told us. So now the first equation tells us that again the y cutoff is five. So yes, we're working with with that one but it tells us we go equal to. So we will need to find it where it lies to that side of the equation. Uh-huh. Perfect way it is. Needs to lie to that side. Unfortunately not. So that one is, is also eliminated. So I haven't calculated anything with this question. I just wrote it down and then used the principles to say, OK, why? Let me see where is the cutoff. And then it should be small or equal to. So then it should lie to the smaller side. If this question was this way around, then this one would have been the feasible answer because then it would have been smaller than that area as well. So if we worked with this formula, that, that would have been the right one to work with. So just by simply changing that small or equal to, big or equal to, to something else, your feasibility area will change. OK, so very careful when we need to work out the feasibility areas to just be, be sure that you know what those signs means and how you need to read it on your, on your um, graphs. OK. So that is nearly when they give you the formulas. They tell you that you need to look at 
which one is the feasibility area. Then what we also love to do is give you a set of formulas. Again, luckily they marked it here, but when they ask us to, to look at, determine the minimum value of cost. So we will need to, to look at which points, that one, that one, that one, that one, sure, maybe that one or that one makes it the minimum value. And don't be fooled by looking at this and say, well, the minimum 96 is the smallest, so it must be 96 because it might be that 96 is not one of those solutions. Okay, so it might be that it's it's not one of those solutions. Okay, so the ones that I can clearly see have points. So that is point 10. So we know y is 10 and, and x is 0. So let's make that the first one. So if I need to work out what z is going to be, we know that x is zero. Y is 10. So here we would have gotten an answer of 120. So that is so far one of the options. Then let's see, is there another point that we can clearly see what the point is? So that we don't know. Do we know that Y is two? Okay, so again, we only know Y is two. We can solve what X is going to be, so we can work that out. Okay, so, so let's look at that point first. We know y is 2. Uh, let's look at that point first. So before we do that, 2x plus 6y and y is 2 is equal to 30. I just want to see what the what what x is because it does not seem like 10 it seems but smaller than 10 okay. so x is 9 so just just smaller than than 10 um so now we can put that x and y into into this so if we do that z will be equal to 18 times 9 plus 12 times 2 sure okay so that will be 18 times 9 plus 24 186 Okay, so at least there is 186, but we know 120 is, is still smaller. Um, so we've done that. Let me just, we're not going to look at those points. We're only looking at those, those three points of, of intersection. Okay, so then the last one is to find out what that point is. Yes. Sorry, sir. On your top equation, you substituted um, y with 10 and then x with 0. Where did you get that? Where do you get that 0? Because I okay. can see where 10 is. So the 10 is is your y 
coordinate and your x coordinate because it is on that cut through it will be the x will be zero okay so that point 15 there would also be x zero y 15 so anything on this y axis the x will be zero okay does that help okay thank you sir cool. okay so with this one we first would need to need to put the two formulas together to work out both x and y we we can guess that it might be four and four, but I am not sure. So let's look at that. So we have, let's just check with two X plus six Y equal to 30. Yes, there's another hand you can quickly ask. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, I see yes. on the second formula where you got your coordinate, né? but then now yes. on the first formula again, I see where you said uh, zero is uh, 18 is to zero, which is why it's 18 and your X would be zero. So yes. again, here on the where you got your 10, uh, I see your on your Y, it's 10, but where do you get the 12? I don't see 12 here on any of the coordinate. In, in the second one. Okay, so I just, sorry, I used that formula again. So it's 18 times the 9. And then it is 12 times the 2 that is there. Okay, so your two coordinates here were X was 9 and your Y was 2. It was zero and ten. It was nine and two. And then I put it into that same minimum value function to work out for one eighty six. So that twelve was coming from from that minimum function, not from any of the coordinates. Okay, does does that again help? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it does. If you put it. I was checking the coordinates here, so I didn't see any point where it shows 12. Yes, yes, perfect. All right. Okay, so now for this one, you can see, ugh, we now need to nearly solve for, for equations again. Um, yes, Nia. Um, sorry, sir. On the second formula, I see you have y is equals to two. I don't understand where did you get the the value for for y, which is two. Okay, so here is that straight line of y equals to two that goes through that point. So that is why I can use the y equals to two because of that straight line. Okay, if they didn't give me that straight line, then I would have needed to work out still what is the Y value. But fortunately enough, they have given me that. Okay. So that is where I got the Y is equal to two. Else I would have needed again to nearly work out what is that, that intersection point, And then only I would know what Y is. Okay, so, but oh. it's only because they've given that to me. All right, thank you, sir. Cool. Okay, so let's, let's quickly, so now again, oof, okay, I need to, so I will multiply the top one by two, so that I can get 4x plus 12y, equal to 60 um, and then I can subtract so that I can just get rid of the x's first 
So 4x minus 4x is 0. 12y minus 2y is 10y. 60 minus 20 is 40. Okay, so y was actually 4. So that would be then 4. Then I put that 4 back into um, any one of those formulas. So if we put it back into 4x plus 2y is equal to 20, we get 4x is equal to 12. Okay, so yeah, x was not a nice number, so let me just check if I'm doing it right. 4x plus 2y, 20, so 4x is equal to 20 minus 8, it's 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, so that number, so I said I would have guessed 4 and 4, but it's actually 3 and 4. Okay, so let's see if we put now in x3, y4, what do we get? So it will, I will actually laugh if we get 96 because that would just be <laughs> wrong that we've done this whole exercise and then got into the smallest number. So 18 times 3 is 54. 12 times 4 is 48. And 48 plus 54 is 102. Okay, so actually the minimum value is at that point for 102. So in none of the calculations, the 96 came out. So again, just be wary that they, yes, they put in the smallest number, but it was actually not an option in this case. Okay, so here we had 102, one option, 186, one option, 120, and then out of that, we will need to decide which one is is the smallest one that we that we will need to need to work with and need to get for okay so they can ask you the same question where they wanted to say okay but what's the maximum and then the maximum value would have been 186 okay so the maximum would have been 186. Um, so again, now that we, we talk about that in your exams, it's, it is online. There are a few different versions of the questions. You would have seen it now in your assignments as well. Some might get the same questions again if you do the second attempt. Some will get a new set of questions, um, but it's not new, new. Sometimes it's just different numbers that they use. So what will happen in your exam as well is you will get one question where somebody else might get a different question. And the only thing that they could have changed with this question is for one of the papers, it will be the minimum and one of the papers, it's the maximum. Um, so that again, you can't really say, question 20, my answer is 102, because for somebody else, it might be a different answer. Okay, so again, in the exam, they do give um, different questions um, to the different students. Okay, I've also just quickly, um, added a link to the evaluation form. 
Um, I am also just quickly putting the link again to to the WhatsApp chat so that the guys that haven't joined the WhatsApp, please do so. So there is the WhatsApp chat and just again the the evaluation form there's the link to the evaluation form as well okay so i'm gonna gonna stop the recording so that i can just we'll share it after the session on